are Coptics Christians. And uh, Coptics are uh, typically Egyptian or North African Christians of the, uh, uh, of the Orthodox variety. And by that, I mean, uh, as last week we talked about Hank Hanegraaff going into Eastern Orthodoxy. And uh, uh, in that Eastern Orthodox tradition, one of the groups within all of that is called the Coptic, C-O-P-T-I-C-S, the Coptic Christianity. Now, they do have a long history. Uh, and in fact, uh, Athanasius, you may have heard of Athanasius. He was from Alexandria and uh, much of that area, Alexandria, Egypt, that would be considered Coptic Christianity even in that day. And uh, Athanasius is the one who uh, really wrote, if you will, the Nicene Creed. And the Nicene Creed is uh, one that we would hold to today. It is the standard uh, position of orthodoxy as it relates to uh, uh, the person of Jesus Christ is uh, uh, one translation of the Nicene Creed uh, from a Coptic site says, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, that is of the same substance of the Father, by whom all things were made for uh, who for us and for our salvation descended from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us during the reign of Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. He rose from the dead on the third day. According to the scriptures, he ascended to the heavens and sits at the right hand of his father. He will come back in glory to judge the living of the dead and his kingdom shall have no end. Now, that is uh, uh, the Nicene Creed and that's an orthodox statement on Jesus Christ. So, they would recite that uh, in their worship services. Are they therefore Christian? Well, let's uh, give a little bit of history, first of all. The Coptic, uh, the, the Coptic Christians were removed from Roman Christianity, that is Western Christianity, at the Council of Chalcedon in the 5th century. Now, this was before East and West split. That was not till uh, 1054. And so when there was only one Roman Catholic Church, if we could say it uh, that way, one, one, one Catholic Church, uh, let's put it that way. Uh, it, during this time, before the, the schism of the, of the uh, Eastern and West, the Coptics were basically kicked out of the church in the 5th century at the Council of Ch Chalcedon. Now, they were kicked out for something called monophytism, monophytism. And uh, what this, this is, is the accusation, at least, was that Coptic Christians believed in only one nature of Jesus Christ, not two. We believe in a dual nature of Jesus, his human nature and his divine nature. Now, this is the reason that they were kicked out. The problem is, it's hard to say, actually, uh, was it semantics between the two groups, or uh, does the uh, Coptic uh, church, did they, do they still believe in monophytism, one nature? They strongly deny that they uh, believe in one nature. They say they believe in two natures. And Honestly, what happened at the Council of Chalcedon very well could have just been politics. That uh, Rome, very much trying to hold its power and strengthen its power, this is why the East and West later split, uh, Rome uh, didn't like any competition coming down from Egypt, and so they just uh, almost made up a heresy. That is possible. Uh, I, I, you know, who knows what actually happened. But uh, the Coptic Christianity has, in, in a sense, been accepted into uh, uh, the, the broader Christian realm in liberal circles. Uh, they're called Coptic Christians, obviously, and not just Coptics. Uh, they were actually a part of the founding of the World Council of Churches in the 1960s. Now, that was, you, you, we could ask a question someday, are the, is the World Council of Churches actually Christian? But they were part of the, uh, the WCC, claimed to have been founded by the Apostle Mark, uh, who, by the way, tradition says that uh, Mark uh, was uh, martyred on the Monday after Easter, and this being post-Easter week, it would have been yesterday. 
Uh, and uh, they enjoyed many years in Egypt without persecution in the 1800s. They started to be persecuted by the Muslims, and of course now uh, the persecution of the Muslims is very strong. Uh, and this is uh, almost renewed. It's been up and down in the 1800s, but certainly has been renewed uh, of, of, uh, of recent. In fact, Muhammad said, treat the Coptics nice. They're brothers. They're kin to us. That was Muhammad's actual teaching, and of course there are those... Uh, uh, those uh, uh, Satan-filled uh, followers of Muhammad now who are uh, uh, out killing Coptic Christians. As I mentioned last week, I don't care who it is they're killing. They're killing them because they're not Muslim. Now, that is the so-called religion of peace. And if you call it a religion of peace, I'm going to call you delusional. Uh, maybe you got your head in the stand. Maybe you're just so uh, messed up in your thinking that logic means nothing, as Alex's previous uh, uh, conversation. But back to our uh, subject. Now, here's the, uh, the issue then. The Coptics believe that you are, uh, how do they believe you're saved? That's what it comes down to it. Very nice statements about Jesus Christ. Uh, some statements of nice, you know, that we would agree with about orthodoxy. But I just want to say there's a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of works that really is involved in Coptic salvation. So the question you have to ask is, can you be saved if you believe that works save you? Here's uh, something that comes from one of their popes a few years ago. They have what they call a pope as well. It's in his book uh, called, in translation, uh, Salvation in the Orthodox Concept. And uh, he uh, shares, uh, he says, uh, th their site says, uh, this book presents many proofs of the importance of good deeds in our salvation. And then uh, six points. Number one, evil work leads to evil condemnation. Number two, judgment will be based upon our deeds. Number three, works are the fruit of true faith. Number four, the good deeds we uh, the good deeds we witness the, the good through good deeds excuse me through good deeds we witness to our faith. Number five, through good deeds we witness to be children of God. Number six, works make perfect faith. Now, the challenge is uh, it it, it uh, really talks about salvation by works, but they're very careful, just like the Calvinists uh, and the Lordship Salvation people, to say it's a witness to our faith, but it's a witness that has to be there. If it's not there, you don't have faith, and thus works are an essential ingredient to Coptic salvation. In fact, uh, let me uh, just read, uh, this is from CopticChurch.net. And they say in the sacrament of baptism, they, like the Catholics, have seven sacraments. And these sacraments are instruments of grace. You get the grace of God by taking these sacraments. So uh, this, in the sacrament of baptism, they say, we attain the rebirth. Now, I think you have, don't have to go any farther than there. In the sacrament of baptism, we, retain, we attain the rebirth. Not of our own merit, nor of the human hand, but by the Holy Spirit. We also receive God's adoption. We attain the remission of sins and sanctification. Now, I would just say that's not Christianity. That's not biblical Christianity. So, the Coptics... Like, uh, I think, the Catholics and, uh, honestly, like a certain uh, uh, fairly large and growing segment of the evangelical world, they will say all the things correct doctrinally about Jesus Christ, even to the point of saying, salvation is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. But then they'll turn right around and they'll say, you are not saved if you are not baptized. The Coptics very clearly here. You receive God's adoption and the remission of sins through baptism. Now, I would just say that's not Christianity. That's Copticism. And yet it is not Christianity, whatever you want to call it. So are the Coptics Christians? I would say there are probably some uh, Christians among the Coptics because there's an awful lot of uh, 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 study of the person of Jesus Christ and even of the word of Jesus Christ. And yet uh, the challenge is, just like the Orthodox Church and just like the Catholic Church, you can't interpret that on your own. You've got to go with the traditions of the church. It's got to be a, 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 a committee who approves 
removes uh, the interpretation you have. And I think uh, that's uh, inherently dangerous there. So uh, I'm going to uh, come. In fact, let me uh, just share very quickly uh, my Sunday sermon, The Essential Christian Gospel. Four points I had. Number one is a worldview that includes man separated from God is essential for salvation. They do have that worldview, man separated from God. Number two, a belief that only God could fix the problem of separation. They do have that view. Number three, the belief that Jesus of Nazareth is the promised redeemer who fully satisfied the demands of redemption. Now, they do believe in the historical Jesus... And uh, they carry that out well. But do they believe he fully satisfied the demands of redemption? I don't think so because you and I have to satisfy the demands of redemption through baptism and the other six sacraments. So I think they fail on that regard. And uh, then the fourth one I have is the belief that Jesus lives in heaven today preparing for his return and that between now and then he offers salvation to anyone, anywhere, anytime. I think they would probably disagree with that statement. And I might add that I was unable to find out what their eschatology is uh, and in general, they don't talk much about being born again because it's such a process of salvation. And uh, this was true again for early uh, Calvinists as well. Such a long, lengthy, uh, you know, if all of this whole package happens, then you are saved. So they don't have a, uh, an, an easy kind of uh, plan of salvation. So again, I want to uh, come back with no. Uh, I don't believe Coptics are Christians. Uh, they, uh, they talk all the things about Christianity, but so do the Mormons. Uh, in fact, for that matter, so do uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, just uh, uh, even having good orthodox statements about the person of Jesus Christ, about uh, the church, theirs is not, uh, uh, not fit, I don't believe, but a number of things you could put and say all this. Well, go, go to James and say, well, even the devils believe that. Even the demons believe this. And uh, so uh, great uh, question coming from us uh, to us from Florida.